I will admit that when I first saw mentions of the Canera Celeste Phoenix call, I thought it was probably an IEM with a built-in mic to use with your phone. <laughs> Not even close. It turns out that the Phoenix call name comes from an ancient Chinese tale, an epic, about hundreds of birds flocking to the call of the Phoenix, and that the Phoenix call motif is woven into the whole product and project. From the inspiration for the sound signature, to the absolutely gorgeous faceplates on the IEMs, to the boxing and added accessories, you can look up the story of the Phoenix call and how it relates to Celeste Vision for these IEMs on their website. It is worth the effort. And I have to say that Kinera or Celeste, if they're not the same thing, really know how to build, present, and package a product. The whole thing is so far beyond expectations at the $130 price point that you might wonder if they made some kind of mistake with the pricing. Just on looks and packaging alone, the Phoenix Call puts IEMs costing three, maybe four times as much to shame. I am not into unboxings, but I was sorely tempted here. Let's just say that the box is both elegant and clever, purple with silver birds and a kind of faint water-printed background, like expensive silk, with a clever and attractive magnetic fold-over closure. Inside, on the inside of the cover, the water painting continues through cutouts that hold what they're calling a bookmark, but which is actually a beautiful piece of enamel jewelry with a dual phoenix motif in red and white and gold, and the phoenix call story printed on a slim folded paper. Over the IEMs themselves, there's a sheet of translucent rice paper with the phoenix call symbol and a bunch of Chinese characters finely embossed in silver, then a layer of foam with cutouts for the IEMs with the cables already attached and a black box that contains, when you get to it, the rest of the cable, a much nicer than many small round zippered case with Celeste stamped, embossed, not printed on it, and two sets of name brand ear tips, the Celeste 221s and the Celeste C07s. And I'm not kidding here. The earpieces themselves look like works of art, with silver birds floating, literally suspended in clear resin over a sparkly sky blue grading to black background for the faceplate. You can get the IEM itself with a clear resin housing that shows literally every detail of the construction, or with one purple and one light red resin body. And if that were not enough, you can order the Phoenix Call with either a 3.5 single-ended cable or a 4.4 balanced cable. That alone is a big thing, and something that many IEMs costing much more do not offer. And it's not just your average cable you might expect to be packed with a $130 IEM either. These are Canera cables, 8-core, silver-plated copper, square-braided, and beautifully matched to the color of whichever IEM you ordered. Purple and red wire or silver and silver wire? These cables themselves would sell online for between $30 and $40, maybe more. Think about it. None of this presentation is cheap. It all costs. If Canera were pairing retail for the box and the stuff included in the box, there would not be much left over for the IEMs themselves. And to price this IEM correctly, you have to figure in the cable. With most of the $100 IEMs, you would be replacing the cable with something better, which will cost you at least $25, maybe $30. And that is certainly not necessary here. And you might be thinking, that either this is way over the top for a $130 IEM, or these IEMs must be something really special. Well, yes, let's begin with the design. You have five drivers in each IEM, each with its own waveguide, frequency separating, tuning tube. There's a seven millimeter strong magnetic dynamic driver for bass, one custom tuned BA for lower mids and mids, one custom tuned BA for upper mids and treble, and two of what Canera calls flat panel drivers to act as super tweeters and produce the sparkle and fizz at the very top. Those are most likely microplanars, similar to the one used in the Kiwi Ears Quintet. But unlike some other companies recently, Canera is not going to fall into the trap of, but is it really a planar? 
These are my first Canera Celeste IEMs, so I'm not sure if the shape of the housing is as unique as it appears to me. They are not the normally rounded off TWS fit, or the shell with the pointy parts that fit in the folds of your ear. They are deeply sloped, elongated, and angle into the ear canal in more or less a fluid manner. They look like something hand molded out of soft resin, but I'm sure they were machine pressed or 3D printed. So yes, the technical design of the IMs is just as over the top as the presentation. But what good is any of that if the IEMs don't sound good? I'm sure you can guess by this point in my review that the Celeste Phoenix Call fully lives up to its presentation, and maybe more. To quote the little pamphlet that comes buried in the accessory box, Phoenix Call has an overall bright sound with deep and elastic bass that is gentler and more relaxed. The mid-range is solid and natural sound, while the high frequencies are clear, bright, and clean. The sound stage is spacious and neutral, with round and smooth vocals and strong resolution, providing you with a comfortable music experience. Yes, this is all true, and pretty much right on accurate. To my ear, with the Celeste 221 tips, the bass, while not overpowering, is certainly a bit more than gentle and relaxed. It's pretty punchy, with enough rumble when called for, and a good solid kick in the mid-bass. It is more relaxed with the CO7 wide-bore tips, but still more than satisfying. The bass never comes forward to be the star of the show, but it is there, laying a solid foundation for any musical genre. This is, by the way, one of those rare cases where the supplied ear tips do not leave anything to be desired. I have tried everything I have, which includes KB Ears 07s, Spinfit W1s, Danu SNS, and TRI Clarions, among a host of no name tips that came with other IEMs, and I have come back again and again to the two choices supplied in the box. The mid-range and vocals are just as advertised. Light, clear, totally present, but not forward or shouty. Instrumental timbre is realistic. Cello, piano, guitar all sound natural and full. The treble seems to go on forever and is light and airy with never a touch of harshness. A comfortable musical experience, but one that simmers with detail and resolution in a sound stage that is certainly a bit wider and more rounded, more three-dimensional than you might expect at this price point. So, all in all, yes, the sound of the Phoenix Call lives up to its box and accessories and goes well beyond the sonic performance you might expect at $130. I would put it up against anything I have heard, costing up to twice, maybe even three times the price, with the possible exception of the Kiwi Ears Quintet, which simply has more native wow factor. Though, for a natural, real sound, many might, I suspect, prefer the Phoenix Call. This $100 price point is getting crowded, and in a good way. In the past few months, I've reviewed the Letcher Galileo, the Kiwi Ears Quartet, and the Simgot Phoenix, or EM6L, and now the Canera Celeste Phoenix Call, all introduced within a few dollars of each other. So how do they compare? Indulge me here as I get a bit fanciful. Let's talk coffee. If IEMs were coffee and your ears were taste buds, then the Quartet is the rich, dark roast of this set. Not dark, actually, but then neither is dark roast coffee, but full-bodied and rich, rich in a way that does not mask the lighter tones of the blend, mellow, with lots of interesting flavor and overtones, fun, an IEM to be enjoyed with dessert or as a wake-up in the morning, maybe while exercising. The Simgot Phoenix is the medium roast, with a nice balance of dark and light, under and overtones, rumble and sparkle. You're every day with every meal drink. It gets you through the day with style. The Celeste Phoenix Call, on the other hand, is a light roast, still with more than enough body to be satisfying, but fully displaying all the overtones and the light touches of fruit and spice that make each blend and each sip unique. A coffee that will reward an hour or two of intent listening in an evening and satisfy the coffee connoisseur in you. The Galileo, on the other hand, is an Americano, though in a porcelain mug, not a paper cup, with more than a dash of cream and sugar, smooth and soothing, your ultimate comfort coffee. Does that make sense? Maybe?
I've been listening to Steve Brogman's Once Upon a Heart, a wonderful set of O'Carolan tunes ranged for solo guitar and played masterfully. Not every IEM can keep up with Steve's flying fingers and the notes of O'Carolan's more energetic compositions. And the differences between these $400 IEMs I have recently reviewed become pretty clear after any time listening to something like Flank C. Hollett, or, for a real test of IEM power, try Dream of Summer by Tony Wenzel from his album Running Away. There is an almost subsonic note at about 25 seconds. On some IEMs, you cannot really hear it so much as you feel it at the back of your neck, like a pressure wave hitting. A few seconds later, it comes up a bit and then morphs into a low bass line. But for a second there, you're not really sure you heard it at all. The note returns in the silent intervals at the turn of the melody during the course of the song, generally taking you by surprise again and most strongly again, just before the final bars. Again, coming out of silence and gripping the back of your neck behind your ears for just a second. Listen carefully to how that note is rendered, mostly because it will get you listening to the intricate arrangement and interplay of the rest of the instruments, to the sonic space created by the music, and how it is reproduced by individual IEMs. Listen for the cellos and violins, the guitar and piano, as they weave together in space and time. Notice the balance. Notice the tone and texture of each instrument, where it sits in the mix and where it sits in space, and how it interacts with the other sounds that flow through and around it. I'm not saying one way of reproducing the music is the right way and all the others are wrong. What I'm saying is that each IEM renders the composers and the musicians' musical imaginings differently. But that brings up another point. Unless you're looking for something really special, a total top-of-the-line experience of music in your IEMs, and can afford to pay whatever it costs, is it any longer necessary to spend more than $130 on an IEM? Your answer may be different than mine, but my answer is no. For $130 or under, I can now get an IEM that will deliver my music in a way that completely satisfies me. And at that price, I can afford to own a couple of them, with different enough sound presentations to keep me from getting bored. Do top-of-the-line, thousand-dollar-plus IEMs offer something more? I certainly hope so, but I am, honestly, unlikely to find out unless someone loans me one. Do mid-tier, $400 to $700 IEMs offer more? Well, then the answer becomes much more difficult. Maybe, depending on your ears, your musical taste, and, of course, the particular IEMs. Maybe is about as close as I can come. To my way of thinking and my way of hearing music, $100 is the new sweet spot for IEMs, where you get the most value for your money, the most satisfying musical experience at a price more of us can afford. This is a good thing. Anyway... If I personally had to pick just one of this new under $100 bunch, what would it be? At this moment of time, it would have to be the Phoenix Call. Yes, I know, I would have said the Sim got Phoenix a week ago, but I really like the detail and the clarity of the Phoenix Call and being able to hear deep and deeper still into the music. And it has a very natural tone and texture. The instruments sound to my ear just a bit more real and natural than they do on the Sim got. I think, again, it's the way the harmonics are reproduced, the added bit of texture to every note. The Simgots sound just a bit dry and flat by comparison. Then, too, the bass on the Phoenix Call is a bit more solid and resonant. And, no, it is not as spectacular or as extraordinary sounding as the Kiwi Ears Quintet. The Quintet has it over the Phoenix Call on both bass and space. But then, the Phoenix Call is half the price of the Quintet, and may be more musical and true to life in the long run. And the Phoenix Call handles all the music I listen to really well. I find myself reaching for it more and more often, almost as much as my Performer 8s and the Quintets. All around, the Phoenix Call is simply an excellent IEM at any price, fully worthy of the legend of the Phoenix Call and the elaborate packaging and presentation that Canera Celeste have given it. And that says a lot for both the IEM and for Canera Celeste. On the other hand, I simply do not understand how they can sell it with this package for $129. But honestly, that's okay by me. I don't have to understand. I can just enjoy. <laughs> 